check. I think it's smooth to any groove. Relax the tongue. Let my mic take a cruise. Max Ornstill, Central Defender, Timbers 2. I'm John Russo. This is the Path to Pro Soccer Podcast. Max, how we doing? Good. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. We are uh, in Portland, Oregon right now. And you've been, how many years have you been here? Uh, this is going into my fourth year. Okay. Four and a half. Kind Four and of. a half. Yeah. And we were talking a little bit, both California natives, but overall the city of Portland, how do you like it? Uh, I love it. Um, I have a lot of family here, which is awesome. Uh, I live half a mile away from my sister, which is great. I have two sets of aunts and uncles here, a grandma here. Um, and besides that, the city itself is really cool. Uh, great food scene. Um, obviously, we were talking a little bit about the weather right now, which is tough, yeah. but um, it makes the summers that much nicer. Uh, you said you had an interesting journey to get to where you are. Do you mind expanding a little on that? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I kind of touched on it, but uh, I wasn't drafted, um, and I didn't have any invitations to preseason or anything, and so I had finished my senior season, um, and I kind of was struggling with what to do. Um, and I knew that I wanted to play professional soccer, but at that time there was, wasn't really much of an opportunity to. And so I, I finished out school, um, and during that time, stayed fit and kept training. Um, and then I went to some combines. Um, and at a combine down in Southern California, uh, a timber scout saw me. And uh, I thought I played well. And he said um, he could help get me with the, with the under-23s, the PDL team. And uh, my sister lived up here at the time, and so I thought, you know, I'll go up and live with my sister for a summer, play PDL, and, and see what comes of, comes of it. Um, and so I came up here. I uh, lived actually in my sister's dining room <laughs> during that summer. I played PDL. Um, I had a lot of fun. I, I played really well. Um, I think I, I, I got, like, U23 player of the year oh. for the Timbers, so that was super awesome. Um, and I was, like, kind of thinking, okay, well, well, what now? Didn't really have much of a plan. Um, and then they asked me if I would stick around and I think train a couple days with T2 at the time. And so I trained a couple days with T2 and I think I met with them. And they said, you know, we can't sign you right now just because of the time of the year. And I don't know if they were going to wanted to anyway, but um, they said I could train for the rest of the year with them. And so I stuck around and trained as a practice player um, for like three or four months. Um, and at the same time, I. I started working at the Adidas employee store. So I would train from like nine, you know, training was at nine, I'd get home at one, take a nap, and I'd usually work the four to 10 shift at the employee store, just to earn some extra cash or just any cash. <laughs> um, and so, you know, that was, that was cool, just getting to, to train in the professional environment and see what the level was like. Um, you know, that also made me realize that, you know, I want to do this full time. Um, and so at the end of the year, they said um, that, that I could come back for preseason the next year. So that off offseason, um, you know, I quit my job at the Adidas employee store um, and just dedicated all my time the next few months to training and getting ready for that preseason because I knew, you know, this is this is my opportunity and um, I wanted to make the most of it. And so I came into preseason that year, I think this was 2017 maybe, yeah, 2017, and um, played well and got offered a contract. And that was, you know, at the time, that was a dream come true. You know, I fulfilled, I, I am a professional soccer player. You know, that's what I had always wanted to do as a kid and I could finally say it. And then from there, it was kind of like, I was just so excited to be there, but once you're there, you, you know, you want to progress. Or my mentality is that you, you just want to keep moving up. And so, you know, first it's like, oh, make the 18. So, you know, once you make the 18, it's like, I'm not satisfied not, you know, being on the bench and not playing. It's like, I want to play. And so then you get into some games and play a little bit. And then, you know, have the opportunity to start some games. And it's like, 
this is fun. I like to, <laughs> I like to, I, I like to start games and play. And so from there, it's like, well, well, how can I make an impact? And so you go from, you just continually move your goals higher and higher and cross them off the list as you achieve them. And so I went from wanting to just make the team and I was just happy to be on the team to now, you know, four years later, I, I want to be an impact player. You know, I want to make the biggest impact and the most positive impact I can and be a leader. And so I think, um, you kind of asked advice earlier, but I think just that having that mentality, um, I kind of, I have a bracelet, but it says TMC, the marathon mentality for Nipsey Hustle, and, you know, that Mamba mentality, you know, Kobe Bryant, um, just inspirational to me that, you know, whatever you want, you got to grind towards. You got to, you know, you got to give your all to it if you want to reach that goal. And I think um, I'm kind of rambling on from the initial question, but um, that has been big for me the past few years. And I think it's important for anyone, whether in sports or whatever, you know, once you reach a goal, you know, it's great to celebrate it and be happy with it. But then, you know, what's the next goal? And I think that's something that I'm continuing to to strive on and to to use as motivation. And, you know, everyone gets motivation from different things. And, um, yeah, I, I just think uh, it was, it's been a, a crazy journey, but, you know, super grateful for, for everything that's happened throughout it. And, you know, I think there's a lot more to come. Um, but yeah, that's just, that's kind of a, a summary of the journey so far, Definitely. at least, but yeah. Definitely. And another season with the Timbers, how has your experience been with the Timbers organization? Uh, it's been great. I think, um, you know, I'm super grateful to, to be in the same city for four years. You know, in the USL, I think there's just a lot of turnover. And so to be able to kind of set down some sort of roots is, is pretty unique. Um, and I think the organization is great. I think we have we have a great relationship, and um, I've learned a lot from from the players that have come through the organization, from the staff. Um, and I think you know there's definitely a backbone of people that have been part of the staff or part of the organization for yeah. since I've been there. And so it's cool to see that you know it has a culture. The club has a culture, and you know being part of that is something pretty cool and, and something that I'm lucky to, I would say lucky to be a part of for sure. Definitely. Definitely. And I think that's very, uh, this culture, I've been talking to other coaches and players from the USL and, and just the foundation of having a fan base and people rounding and a winning mentality seems to be so great, at least for the American soccer system. Uh -huh. Right. And it's great. Well, um, expectations season wise, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm excited. I think last year, um, we started the season super well and had a great trajectory. And then, you know, for one reason or another, I don't think we met our expectations. And so I think going into this year, there's, you know, a little bit extra motivation to, to reach that potential and to, um, because there's so much quality in the club and we've brought in some really quality guys, um, it's exciting. And I think knowing that, you know, we're capable of, of being a really good team and making a run and, you know, trying to win something at the end of the year is, is always motivating. And so, you know, I like to set lofty goals and I think this year is no different and it's, it's just exciting for sure. hundred percent. Do you, so we, we talked a little bit earlier, but uh, first day of the season, preseason starting right now, mm -hmm. uh, 25 years old, but you do have experience obviously playing now. Do you feel a certain amount of responsibility taking some people under your wings? Um, yeah, for sure. I think, you know, even it's kind of funny. Uh, my first year as a pro, I was 23. And there was times throughout the year when I was the oldest player on the field as a rookie. Yeah. And so, you know, being in a club that plays a lot of young players and has a lot of being on a team that has a young a lot of young players, um, I definitely feel it's my responsibility to you know, try and set a good example and be a positive leader. And I think as um, as I've gotten older, for sure, I just realized more of that responsibility. And that's definitely something that I focus on. Um, and I, I think that's something that I can bring to the table. Um, and I take pride in it. And I think that's something 
that I definitely look forward to, to improving on this year and trying to get better at. And um, I, mean, I have a good time, uh, you know, trying to mentor guys and just set a good example for sure. Definitely, definitely. Uh, you have a, a, a weekend off. Mm -hmm. no, so you don't have to report anywhere. How are you spending your weekend in the city? Ooh, that's tough. I mean, I think if I had a weekend off, I think I would definitely try and get out of the city maybe for a day, maybe go on a, go out to the coast or go, uh, you know, there's so much, so much unbelievable nature around. It's kind of hard not to, to take advantage of that when you get a day off. Um, <clears throat> so I think I would definitely try and go on a long hike, um, for one of the days and maybe one of the other days I do like going on, if the weather permits it, I like bike rides I'll go on a long bike okay. ride definitely. Um, <clears throat> around the city or wherever um, and definitely enjoy some good food because there there's plenty of that yeah, to go around favorite restaurant here ooh that is okay so it's really difficult yeah. to, to decide that one but I'm gonna have to plug my my uncle owns a restaurant actually in Lake Oswego which one it's called Baird's on B oh, okay. it's a bar and grill um, and even unbiased, it's probably, <laughs> it's probably one of my favorite restaurants yeah, yeah. that I that I go to. Um, so I think that's got to be up there in my top three. But if I'm looking for, I'm a big fan of Mexican food. Yeah. Growing up in California, I love uh, this taco place called La Tac or La Toc. Um, it's on the east side. Okay. Really good tacos. Um, so those are probably two of my my Portland staples. Okay. Um, but like I said, it's so hard to choose. Really There's is. so many. You could just go to a place you've never been, a hole in the wall, and you'll be blown away. Yeah, I hear you. When, uh, after practice, after a match, how do you manage your downtime? What's the recovery um, and, and in general? What yeah, I mean, I think recovery is definitely the number one priority. Um, and I think, you know, going through my first couple of years, um, I would get home and... I might not leave the house after that just because I was one I was new to the city and didn't really know what to do and two I was just I think just so ex so excited to be playing pro soccer that I just I didn't really feel like I needed another thing to do but I think as I've gotten older it's important to have balance and now that I have more of an idea of how to take care of my body um you know, I obviously put that first and so whatever I need to do to take care of my body like if it's a really hard day um, you know, I might take an hour nap and then sit on the couch or do a Norma Tech, roll out, stretch. Um, but if, you know, now that I know what I can handle and what the training loads are like, um, you know, I might go get a coffee with a teammate. Um, I've just tried to increase my productivity outside of it. So I have that kind of balance, you know, yeah. go to the park, take the dog somewhere. Um, so, yeah, as I've gotten older, I think I have a better understanding of my body and how to treat it. And so I don't have to just sit on the couch and think of that as recovery. There's other forms of recovery. Um, but you know, being an athlete, uh, your number one priority is, is making sure your body can perform because you know, you take for granted, you know, your body when you play a sport because you think that it's just always gonna be 100%. And then when that's taken away from you, you, you know, you, it really hits you because you're like, wow, I can't do so much of what brings me joy and what brings me life, and I really need to make that a priority. And so as I've gotten older, I think I've just been able to, you know, make balance more of a, a priority and kind of understanding what works and what doesn't is, is big. The mental toll that a uh, long season can take, and especially uh, cloudy weather here all the time and people are coming from all over, how do you handle that? How do you... Um, mentally take care of yourself um i think that's definitely something that that a lot of people underestimate they think that playing a professional sport you just have to have you know ability and talent uh with with regards to the sport and then they don't really take into account the mental aspect and i think that's if your mind isn't right then it's it's almost impossible to perform mm -hmm. the way that you want to and so um I've definitely, you know, I've had some issues staying on the right track mentally, and I think finally I've been able to, you know, like I said earlier, get a sense of that balance. Um, I think mental, 
taking care of your mental health is one of the most important things in not only in sports but just in life um and so uh you know i've started i've started meditating you know working on meditation um but just become being more aware of of your of your mental health is important and i think you know we talked a little bit earlier how you know the weather yeah it's tough but you know seasonal depression is a real thing and i think uh, I struggled with that at one point, uh, you know, a couple years ago when I was injured and then last year at some points, but I think now I've, I'm much more aware of it. And I think, you know, like I said earlier, just being aware of your, your mental status is super important. And I think getting that, that frame of mind in the right place is critical for performance. And so, you know, I try and do the best I can to, to keep that balance and make sure that you know, it gets my performance where I want it to be. When you were a rookie, is there anything in particular that you wish you knew? Tips? Um, yeah, for sure. I think, you know, obviously as I've played, um, I've learned a lot. I think I've probably learned more over the past, you know, three, four years than a lot of time before that. And I think um, we kind of just touched on it, but just the importance of, of, the mental side of the game you know I think there's so many so many guys who think that um, you know there's just so many guys that can hit a long ball or hit a short pass or dribble by someone but can you do that for eight or nine months straight and it's, it's so much about consistency and just I think uh, a lot of times you get caught up in the moment thinking about things and I think just as a rookie, I think I just wish I, not wish, because, you know, all these things have made me who I am today, and I, I'm grateful for that, but I think it's important to know the, the importance of perspective and kind of also, you know, adding on to that, the importance of treating your body right, and I think that's always something, you know, I've had injuries in college and in high school and all that stuff, but I think if I had dedicated more time to that in the past, I could have, you know, maybe prevented some things. And so I think as a rookie, I was so excited just to be there and to be part of a professional team that, um, you know, maybe I could have treated my body a little better. And I think, you know, there's very few people who do everything possible that they can to get their body right. But I think just the more the more effort you put into your body, the better it's going to treat you in the end. And I think that's something, uh, you know, every rookie should know. Definitely. And even as you get older, just everyone, just mm -hmm. put put the effort into your body and it, it will return the favor for sure. Why is this season going to be your best season yet? Um, I think just that experience is big. I think that having a few years of experience and perspective uh, is big and, uh, I think this off season, I, I worked on some things that I think that I needed to improve on, and I'm just looking forward to, to you know, putting that to work. Um, it's just uh, it's an exciting time. I think we have a good group of guys together, and um, I'm just optimistic about the future for sure. Excellent, excellent. Um, and speaking of the future, what are your goals moving forward here right now? Um, you know, like I said, I like to set lofty goals, and so. I would love to finish, you know, top of the West, mm -hmm. top three at least, and um, have a good position in the playoffs and then make a run. Um, would love to get some some hardware. Obviously, a trophy would be amazing, um, and just perform to what I think my my abilities are. And I think, um, you know, we touched on it early, but being a good leader and being an example is something that I'm working on, and and I think is is a goal of mine. And, just looking forward to putting that to work. 100%. What are your thoughts on Pat the Pros and organization? Oh, I think I think it's great. I think um, being someone who wasn't drafted um, and someone I think who I went to a combine actually. This was before Pat the Pro was a thing, I believe. Um, but I think that provides such an unbelievable platform, and especially Pat the Pro with the the amount of coaches and the quality of coaches that are there. Um, it's a platform that's it's so unique and so necessary because so many guys, you know, slip through the cracks in American soccer, um, you know, and I think what 
what they do there is awesome. And I think so many players have gotten opportunities because of it. And, you know, there's only going to be more in the future. Um, and, yeah, I, would, I have nothing but good things to say about them. And I think it's really exciting to see, you know, how it went from, you know, some coaches and some players to now there's tons of coaches and there, there's so many applications that it's hard to accept guys because, you know, so many quality players are looking for that, that look. Um, and I think it's something that's, that's super necessary in the current climate of American soccer, and it's exciting to see what they're doing, for sure. Yeah, that's interesting. So in the current climate of American soccer, would you change anything as like how it's done now? Oh, um, I mean, I think that there's definitely, yeah, things that can be changed. What I, whether I know what those exact changes are right now, I, I don't know the the specific answer to that but I think you know the college format having you know only playing a three-month season is really difficult you know um, and having to limit your hours on the ball the rest of the year is difficult and I think you know I think there's as we as American soccer continues to get better I think the system hasn't really changed a whole lot and so you know, yeah, like I said, I think that there obviously are some things that could change, but I don't know exactly what that is right now, but um, I definitely could think about that more for sure. Perfect. Well, Max, thank you again for sitting down and talking. This, yeah. was, this was great. Of course. Thanks for having me.